Hi, Sherry here. Um, I just wanted to thank all of you guys for supporting the channel, for liking, subscribing, and commenting. I, this is still a dream to me. I still can't believe I'm actually doing this. This is amazing. So, um, yeah, and also the cards as well. Thank you for supporting the cards and encouraging me to actually get them to print. Um, they're actually made of marker. Um, so when I started to draw the cards, I didn't really take it seriously. I just, you know, wanted to make my own set of cards and see where it would lead me. And wow, it's taken me on a journey. So namaste, guys. Thank you so much. I appreciate everything that you've done to help me in my journey for the past two months. And I hope that I can return the favor. So peace and love and love you much. Cheers. Hi guys, Sherry here from No Fuck Skim Crew. How's it going? So this is going to be a Divine Feminine reading for March the 10th until the 17th. I'm going to be using the Crystal Ball um, spread, which involves uh, a 5x5 five five grid. Um, it'll show us a snapshot of the energies surrounding the next week. So it will show the distant past, past, present, uh, near future, and future. Okay, so my cards for the main spread, John Holland, I'll be pulling um, four cards for the masculine energy, feminine energy, um, crowning and foundation, as well as two cards from Call It Baron Reed from the Enchanted Map. Okay, here we go. So this is going to represent the distant past position. So there's also a timeline that runs from uh, left to right, which be uh, past to the future, and then past to the future this way. First card, Four of Swords. So again, this is energy just pertaining to the feminine. So Four of Swords talks about a retreat, a pause, going within, um, moving away from negative energy and stilling the mind in order to make a decision or plan for the future. Um, but it has to do more with laying a foundation. Uh, yeah, it also talks about uh, healing your heart as well. So there's a sense of retreat there. Next, Ten of Swords. So the feminine got this in the Twin Flame reading. Um, this represents the dark night of the soul. It's cutting away all the negative. Um, in the uh, Rider Waite deck, it depicts a person on the ground they got 10 swords in their back so this represents you know being stabbed in the back over and over again um, having a lot of anxiety and fear and guilt uh, so this is finally releasing that a 10 is um, reduces to a 1 so it's a completion and then a new beginning next four of pentacles so this is a state of being closed off. It could be holding on too tightly to something um, or someone's holding on too tightly to you. But we got a four and then a one and then a four. So there's a lot of grounding energy here. Um, this can also talk about laying a firm foundation in the 3D world. Um, yeah, but I'm getting a, a feeling that it ha represents more the energy of being closed off. So if someone is being closed off to you or you're being closed off to them. And like I said, this is in the distant past. Nice. Awesome. 11-11, Twin Flame Connection. Um... So it looks to me, you know, like you went within, you released the negativity, um, and then open up to this twin flame connection. Uh, so yeah, it's my 1111 calling card. That means that this reading will pertain to your twin flame connection. Seven of wands. So this is you know, stepping into your power, um, never giving up, never surrendering, never backing down, and speaking your truth. Um, you have core values and beliefs that you um, 
will stand up for it and fight for it if you have to. So it seems to me like you've risen from the, you know, the flames like a phoenix from the dark night of the soul. You've stepped into your power and so in the recent past you have gained strength and the ability to express yourself clearly, never compromising, never giving up. Okay, so next row is the recent past position, Six of Cups. So this talks about somebody from the past coming back. Um, it also represents childhood-like memories, um, feeling love in the purest sense, innocent love. So somebody from your past, you know, um, has been on your mind. Uh, in the past, you tried to retreat from the thoughts, clear your mind, um, but there's still that sense of, you know, longing or wanting to reconnect with somebody from your past. Wow, the Knight of Cups. So this is a gesture of love, uh, something, someone coming to offer you their heart. Um, it is a poetic gesture, romance, um, but it's a beginning of love. And again, there's that sense of yearning, wanting, uh, longing for union, for relationship. So that is directly underneath the Ten of Swords. So it seems to me like you cut away something pretty drastic in order to make room for this love connection. Wow, star card, hopes and dreams coming true. So you made a wish upon a star and spirit is telling you that, um, you know, your dreams will be realized in the future. So this also comes after a period of difficulty. Um, and it, it is a card of hope saying that the worst is over. Uh, so now this is a time of healing, rest, rejuvenation, and you can start making plans for the future again. <clears throat> Sorry. So um, that comes right below the Four of Pentacles. So there's almost a sense of being open. Um, you had to close yourself off for a period of time in order to look after yourself. And from that, you were able to heal your heart. Nice. Oh my God. The Ten of Cups right below the 11-11. So the Ten of Cups represents that happily ever after. Um, in the Rider Waite deck, it depicts a man and a woman in front of the house and, you know, this big rainbow above the house. And it represents emotional abundance, satisfaction, peace, harmony. Um, it is a completion. So it reduces to one. Um, yeah, so the distant past position, we have that 11-11 connection. And from it, this sense of feeling at home. Okay, next. The Eight of Pentacles. So this talks about working very hard in the 3D world in order to solidify a foundation. Um, you've... You have a sense of accomplishment. Uh, you've been rewarded for your efforts and now you're continuing to work towards the future to um, make your foundation even more stronger than it was before. So this is below the seven of wands. So that represents, you know, you're really coming into your strength and working very hard um, in grounding this energy here. This is a very beautiful row. The first row is a healing, a letting go of negative energy, you know, that sense of being closed off. And then bam, the 1111 connection awakens something in you. Uh, the recent past position, somebody, you know, you've been in touch with somebody from the past um, or longing for someone in the past. They've either come towards you with this gesture of love 
or you've made this wish that you would like for somebody to come back from your past to offer you this, you know, love. Um, but there's a sense that you really have a deep connection to whoever this person is in your life. And clearly it would have to do with, you know, your twin flame because we got that 11-11 there. So you want this perfect ending and you're working towards it. Wow, completion. This is a world card. You, the Divine Feminine got this in the Twin Flame reading. Um, so there's a sense that she's really coming into her knowing. Uh, she has worked through all the the stages of the you know the fool's journey. She's had her heart broken many times, and risen from the phoenix. So, yeah, this card, again, there's a progression here from ending the nastiness, a period of rest and rejuvenation, and then present position, a completion. So this card represents the energy coming in from the past. The energy flows in this manner. The last card in the recent past was the Eight of Pentacles. So the energy flows back into the present, and she's bringing this completion. It is the final piece of the puzzle being um, put into place. So this is congratulations. Um, once again, it's harvest. Uh, you're being pat on the back for all the hard work that you've done. Uh, so the, the world card represents the finality of a stage, and it could represent a 20-year cycle. And from that, a brand new beginning. So it is the fool's journey uh, that will begin once again after this card usually comes. All right. Next. Nice. Um, the Nine of Cups. Wish granted. Another awesome card. Uh, so this card comes as a result of the Ten of Swords and the Knight of Cups. Um, this is emotional satisfaction, abundance. It is celebrating love. Uh, this guy's playing a guitar. He's most likely, you know, in a restaurant and, you know, you can hear people laughing and uh, clinking their glasses and dancing and just enjoying life. So it's satiation. It is satisfaction. It is abundance of love overflowing. Next. Nice. Oh, my God. Wish is granted. And it's right beside you got two wish cards that have been granted to you. And what is it in regards to? The 1111 Twin Flame Union. So present position. This is actually the, the center card of the entire reading. Um, this is zero point energy. And it's showing up as the lowest card. Oh my god. So the energy, uh, the main, you know, the main concept in the reading, the main focus of the reading is this, this twin flame connection. Uh, so this is zero point and all the other cards um, span out in every direction to give clarification for this card here. So there's a sense that your focus is on union. Um, again, this card represents longing, wanting union. And because you got the two wish granted cards, that means that uh, this union is happening. Especially with the completion card right beside it. Wow, this is such a beautiful reading. Oh my god. Okay, next. Seven of Cups. So there's a sense here that you, you don't quite know how to reach this 1111 connection. Um, there's a sense that you're questioning whether it's real or not, whether it's just a fantasy or an illusion. This is Dorothy from The Wizard of Oz, so she's looking for the yellow brick road. Um, so, you know, spirit is just telling you to relax, go within, you know, it's okay if you don't know how to get to this point. But know that um, it isn't illusion, it is real. Clearly, um, the Twin Flame Union is right at the center of the reading. 
you know, all these wish cards, abundance coming towards you. So put these little tiny last remaining, you know, thoughts out of your mind. <clears throat> Belief. Next. Eight of Cups. So it's interesting how there's this layer of, um, it's almost like action here. These are states of mind. They are completions here. And, you know, there was a sense of being closed off, you know, cutting things out of your life. Then there's this beautiful, beautiful flow of love. <clears throat> Whenever my throat gets scratchy, it means that communication is required. So, um, the Eight of Cups, that talks about action. It's about walking away from negative people, negative emotions, people that just make you feel like crap and you're like, I'm done. And off you go on a spiritual quest looking for inner peace. Um, it's a pilgrimage. You are trying to find your true calling. So this is the energy that you're bringing into the near future. So you know, this, this twin flame connection has caused you to feel a little confused. Um, but you are detaching yourself from emotions, detaching yourself from the outcome. You're just standing in your power, working hard uh, towards your ultimate goal. And you're no longer um, engaging in drama and bullshit anymore. You're done with that. That's a completed stage. All right, so next we have the sun card. Yeah, from the darkness there is light. Perfect, and it is right below the world card. So you've realized that you are the sun in the sky, and this you are the star in the sky. Your connection to the universe is of oneness. You realize that everything that is out there is a reflection of you. So you, in the near future, you represent this beautiful sun, powerful um, being. So there's the best card in the major arcana. Um, this means that abundance is coming. It represents happiness, new beginnings, a uh, feeling of innocence. It's a return to innocence. It's a return to feeling this pure love. Uh, you're looking at life through a baby's eyes, a child's eyes, and there's just so much excitement and optimism for the future. So um, this is generally a yes card. So if you had a question, this the answer is yes. Um, and it comes after this completion, you know, the world. It's like, look at, um, you've done so much work, you've retreated, um, you've held love, this pure, innocent love in your heart. And now get ready because the sun is coming. <clears throat> and this could also represent the masculine energy as well. This is um, the sun, so that's masculine, whereas the moon is feminine. But I just think it's, you know, emotional, um, physical, mental uh, abundance coming towards you. Wow! <laughs> The twin flame, divine feminine, here you are, girlfriend. In the near, near future, you're really going to be stepping into your knowing, and it will be solidified in your mind that you are the twin flame. You are this beautiful goddess of love. And again, that comes after the 10, so it was the dark night of the soul. Is a sense of longing for love, but having that connection with somebody on a deep level, feeling completely emotionally satisfied, your dreams and wishes will come true, you know, so just hold that space of divinity and truth in your heart. Um, you are this beautiful energy ball <laughs> of fire. You're really stepping into your power as a divine feminine. No way. The Ace of Cups right below the Twin Flame and the Star card. 
Oh my god. Look at that. Wish granted. So the Ace of Cups, it talks about, um, you know, the, the, the lover's card is a longing, it's a want. Um, the Ace of Cups is finally being at that point where you've healed the past, you've let go of the bullshit. It seems to me it's in the distant past. Um, you know, you got these questions still rolling around in your mind, but you're not attached to anything. So you've forgiven others, you've forgiven your, yourself, uh, let go of the past, and now you're, you know, you're at that state where you can truly let love into your heart, and then and only then will true love come towards you. So again, that is right beneath the lover's card. Remember, that's the center card of the reading, uh, so everything... Uh, moves out in every direction from that. Uh, here we got the Divine Feminine, Wish Granted. Um, you know, uh, the Knight of Cups, Wish Granted. Um, the Ten of Cups, which is a happy ending. A little bit of confusion. And, of course, that brand new beginning there. Amazing. Knight of Swords. So, from this confusion... You know, not knowing if this is a true connection, you know, on a really deep level, questioning it. From that comes the truth. Clarity. The knight is an energy that comes in very sudden. And he speaks his truth. He's the champion, the rebel without a cause. He is emotionally detached. Remember that this is a seven of cups, which has to do with emotions. So it's getting strong mental control over your emotions and it's a movement forward but it is you know speaking your truth standing for justice cutting away um any lingering questions that you may have this could also represent the masculine coming in and speaking his truth about you know the 1111 connection i don't know Nice. Oh my God, these are amazing cards. Judgment. Yes. So, it's almost like, okay, you've been re working really hard and you feel like it's a struggle. You keep feeling you need to stand up for yourself, express your core values and beliefs to people, uh, and you're really putting yourself through the grind, working very hard towards your, your goals. Um, note that this is an eight and then another eight below it. Um, so that's infinity. It's uh, a continuous flow. You know, if you don't deal with somebody, something in your past, it's going to come back to you again. It's like that karmic cycle over and over again until you finally address it and move on. So um, in the present position, like I said, you're leaving the present with this energy. Uh, and it brings in this flow of abundance, but this is a confirmation, once again, that that um, dark night of the soul is over. This is a rebirth. This is a grand awakening. Aha. Uh, it is stripping away the ego. Uh, you know, um, just seeing society for what it truly is, um, not identifying with um, attachments, outcomes, and this also represents a rebirth. It is a brand new start, seeing things from a completely different view, um, an awakening. It's a higher level of consciousness. So like I said, there's this evolution of really struggling to make it in the 3D world, make it in your relationships, and then you're just letting it fall away. You're like, you know, I don't have to prove myself to anybody. I know what's important to me. I know what I want. I know my truth. I'm... And I'm going forward with what I know to be the truth. I'm no longer questioning myself. All right, final row. Nice. Oh my God, I cannot plan these cards out better. 
this is absolutely so beautiful. Okay, temperance. This to me is an ultimate union card. Um, the lover's card is a yearning. It's a wanting that relationship to come. Um, the 1111 card is just a confirmation card that th this is a 1111 twin flame reading. Um, the Three of Cups is another union card for me, but that just rep represents a celebration of love. And here, the Tempest card. This is a coming together of dualities, the yin and the yang. She represents that S symbol between the signs, the, the yin and the yang. Um, she is complete balance. She is zero point energy. She um, is where things come, like material matters, uh, come into being in the 3D world from source. Uh, so the magician is one that pulls the energy from zero point, where um, temperance is zero point. Uh, union, it's an integration or union of the souls. It's like the zipping of the he double helix for your DNA. You know, there's oneness. So, um, and this is so beautiful. It's right below the world card, the sun card. It's that completion and, you know, a promise of abundance. Uh, and here we have the temperance, which is union. Uh, the temperance card also represents patience. Uh, you planted the seed in the past and you're nurturing it. You're helping it to grow. And uh, yeah, it seems to me that it's because you've done your work. Um, you found that ultimate state of balance. Next. Are you kidding me? Oh my God. I'm... Wow, I'm literally getting tears in my eyes right now. Wow. That is right below the twin, uh, the divine feminine. I'm literally crying right now. Right beside the union card. Your love begins. Oh my gosh, I almost have to stop for a minute. So, the twin flames coming together. Brand new beginning of love. Without a question, a twin flame connection. So for some union, what happened for you? as a final outcome. So, I mean, this reading isn't for everybody, but, uh, yeah, I cannot pick a group of cards. I really cannot. That expresses a twin flames journey. There is no negative energy here whatsoever. And if it is, it's from the distant past. Congratulations, guys. There was that expression of love, that opening, that beginning, wish granted, emotional satisfaction related to the twin flame. Uh, as a result, you were able to step into your divinity and final outcome, the bind masculine, come to offer you that love and emotional bliss. Next. Wow. Uh, communication card. This could actually represent communication, literally. Um, this represents a woman texting on her phone, so it could be a phone call or, or messages. But um, this is also Cupid's arrows. And note how it's right below um, the wish granted star card, twin flame, union, ace of cups, and Cupid's arrows coming towards you. Uh, this also talks about, you know, reaching for the stars, 
the irony and having that wish come towards you. It's, you know, beautiful energy, positive energy flowing towards you. It also represents your wish granted because you're wishing on a star. And here it comes. Eight of Swords. That is a confusion. A confusing card. Okay, well that's fine. Um, that is below the 1111, the Ten of Cups. So, you know, the energy that I'm associating, associating with this is that present um, feeling of being confused, wanting to express your truth or have a, a truthful conversation. Um, the Eight of Wands, again, that's about communication. Uh, but then we have this Eight of Swords. And this is feeling like you can't move forward. You're locked behind a bar, um, prison bar, but it's a, a state of mind. And it's all an illusion, you know. So I'm, I'm thinking, you know, because there's this haziness, it's not enough to really say that you feel completely deadlocked and you can't move forward. It's almost like a release, you know, uh, a realization. Um, the night carries a sort of truth, so you cut through the darkness to reveal the light. So there's two eights beside each other. There's a lot of eights here. Uh, you got all four eights. Eight of Pentacles, Eight of Cups, Eight of Wands, and the Eight of Swords. Wow! The High Priest. Wow. The Divine Masculine in his spiritual form completely connected to the Divine. So he, he has popped into the reading to say, I am with you always in the 5D. I will never leave you. We are, we are one. We are connected. So please do not do this to yourself. Whatever questions you have about the union, put them out of your mind. Do not allow this to happen. I'm always with you. I love you. I'm right here beside you. And again, it comes right after this judgment card. So it's realizing your life is just an illusion. It's just a movie being played on a screen, a projection. It is an externalization of an, the, your internal world. So this is complete dissolution, dissolution of the, the system and its conditionings. And from that, this beautiful high priest connected to source through his crown chakra and eye chakra has come in to reassure you and comfort you and let you know that um, all of that is over. So congratulations, ladies. I am so proud of you. This is absolutely beautiful. A beautiful progression. Withdraw. Expression of love. Twin flame. Standing into your truth. High priest. Finding your power. Um, wanting this you know, dream life, twin flame connection, stepping into your divinity union, being closed off, um, healing yourself, opening your heart, holding that twin flame connection close to you, brand new beginning, Cupid's arrows coming towards you. It's just such a beautiful flow of energy so beautiful so please do not allow that to ruin um, or take control of you because like I said it's just an illusion all right next we are going to be pulling four cards from John Holland psychic tarot 
so I will be reading each of these to you and then uh, and also the Call It Baron Reed cards. Um, yeah, so I really don't think it's necessary for me to do a summary part for the video because I mean there isn't much more that I can add to this. It's just too perfect. Okay, so this is going to represent the divine masculine energy in terms of how it is affecting the reading. So he got nice, the four of swords. So this would represent his energy right here, the corner card, the cornerstone. All four of these cards are the cornerstone. So in the past, there seems to be that release and um, a, re a solidity into your spiritual knowing and understanding. So he's bringing in the sense of going within, finding, seeking solitude and really looking after himself, healing his heart. Um, it's a grounding energy. Yeah. Beautiful. Uh, feminine disruption. Whoa. So this is a tower card. This is finally letting go of the past. It, when something is built on a faulty foundation, it was meant to come down. Uh, so this is the divine feminine releasing that dark night of the soul, releasing your expectations, your ego, your, your attachments to the 3D and letting it all crumble and being that consciousness behind the tower not engaging yourself in the tower, not controlling the, the tower, releasing and allowing it to fall. Don't hold on to it. Beautiful. Okay, so for the foundation, oh my God. You guys have no idea. If you watched all three of my videos, you'll know that the masculine has been showing up on the feminine side in this 3D form, uh, offering support while she you know, goes through her journey. So there's a sense that he's really stepping into his spiritual knowing and understanding because that is the final card in your reading. And now it's showing up as um, the foundation. Good. Final card. Two of Pentacles. So this is a crowning energy. This represents um, choices, movement, and decisions. So um, either you know a decision needs to be made about the three D world, um, or you know you just feel like you're unbalanced, like. Um, there's a lot of things occurring around you. This represents change. The only thing that's certain is change. Uh, so you feel unsure about your footing, um, but Spirit is asking you to be resilient, bend with the wind, be the calm within the storm. Uh, but change is ultimately, you know, coming to fruition. So um, relax into it and allow. Okay, so now I'm going to pull two cards from Call It Baron Reed. The first card will represent the Divine Masculine. What is the overall message for the Twin Flames, or for the Divine Masculine Twin Flame? Face Spirit, One Ring Circus. So this talks about... Um, setting up clear boundaries between you and, and another. It is a feeling of really looking after yourself, retreating in order to heal yourself. Um, yeah, I'll read it to you. Okay, and for the feminine, protecting 
treasures. So there's a sense that you're worried, you know, that uh, if you take a step forward with something, that something will be lost. Uh, in spirit is saying to not worry, allow that tower because everything is happening as it should. Divine timing, everything will be protected while you're going through this process, so have no worries. All right, so let me read these cards to you. I'll be back in a moment. This is the energy that both aspects are bringing into uh, the Divine Feminine reading. Uh, the feminine is bringing in the tower, while the masculine is bringing in the four swords. So, disruption. A sudden, usually unforeseen disruption or major change is happening or is about to take place. Even if it appears to be negative experience, it can lead you to enlightenment or a total shift in your lifestyle. In traditional tarot meaning, this card represents the falling tower that eventually crumbles due to its weak foundation. Whichever part of your life you focus on, this is an opportunity to rebuild with a solid, positive structure to make you or a situation even stronger. There are times when the most difficult situations arise in your life. If you choose to, they can act as catalysts to heal other areas. They are beneficial because they're truly your greatest teachers. Learn from the past mistakes, accept them, and integrate them into your life as stepping stones. To be forewarned, to be forearmed. The disruption card is a reminder that negative thinking, limiting beliefs, ignoring problematic situations, and risky or careless lifestyles must be addressed so that the positive changes can take place. Life has a habit of moving you forward, whether you're ready or not. Transformation of body, mind, and soul can happen if you view dramatic time or changes as an opportunity for soul growth. Um, in the future, you may look back and be thankful for this opportunity. Okay, and the masculine brought the four swords. This card implies that a period of rest, meditation, rejuvenation, and recuperation is in order. It usually comes forward when you're encountering or coming out of a particular emotional or mentally taxing experience. The number four in numerolo numerology means foundation. So this is a time to heal, to be with your soul, and continue moving steadily forward. Allowing space just for your reflection is both needed and long overdue. Reposing and taking moments for yourself will give you the opportunity to look at a problem or situation instead of being in it. It's all a chance to stand back, view your life with clarity and renewed appreciation, and see where changes can be made to create a healthier and stronger foundation, in the, enabling you to take your next step. So the foundation energy is the High Priest Wisdom. When the student is ready, the teacher will appear. This card illustrates that there is a spiritual teacher who is about to influence you or step into your life to impart his or her wisdom. Look around. Is there someone in your life who has the acumen, education, knowledge, and ability to integrate spirituality and its laws into the constraints of the physical? This could be a compassionate person who offers guidance and inspiration and reminds you that you are so much more than a physical being. You're also a spiritual being with unlimited power and potential. You may have also drawn this card to confirm that it's time to reach out and find an organization or a group of like-minded souls. Being part of a group where you can be yourself, share your thoughts, and get valuable feedback can infuse you and encourage you to be all that you can be. Kindred support helps you live life to the highest ideals. Finding a true inspiration and enlightenment, that part, that's part of your soul. Over time, the student often becomes a teacher, so don't be surprised when others seek you out and find you. This card, is, this card of wisdom is letting you know that you have so much to share, whether you realize it or not. So yeah, the, the other um, message that I was getting from the High Priest card was that the Divine Feminine is really coming into their um, sole purpose. You know, they're helping others, they're guiding others, reaching out. You know, we're all on this journey together. Um, so, movement and choices. Uh, this card indicates a time of movement. So, this is crowning energy. Significant changes and choices must be made. With hard work, great effort, and determination, you have the ability to juggle all the demands that are in front of you. Whether they concern money, business decisions, or other projects, it's important to stay flexible and focused. 
You don't have to be alone. Reach out for the advice and assistance. In addition, a financial union or partnership may, be, may present itself to you. The more time you take to make these vital decisions and choices, the longer it will be before you can move towards your goals in the physical and material world. The changes that are emerging aren't some random acts or coincidences. They're all a part of a positive and larger scheme. Notice the connection with everything as this will enable you to avoid future problems and conflicts. So this is the messages from the universe. The masculine got the one ring circus. I'll read his first. You are capable and competent. Independence is key now as you step into your journey today. Others may not have the vision and resources that you need. Recognize that all the wisdom you've acquired along the way makes you particularly competent and capable of moving forward with assurance. Self-reliance is important. Another aspect to consider is creating and maintaining clear boundaries between you and another. Be discerning about your partnerships at this time. When you know who you are and have a healthy sense of where you end and others begin, you're able to enter into the best kind of relationship and will attract people who mirror back your wholeness. Independent relationships are always mutually supportive, stimulating, and transformative. You can achieve anything at this time. And protecting treasures for the Divine Feminine. You are always protected and divinely di directed. Although this is a time of great risk, know that the fundamental level you are able to move forward safely and securely. The proverbial nest egg is safe and secure no matter the fluctuations in the world. Guardian angels and other guides are whispering to you, making you aware of their protective presence. Yes, yes, yes. Your loyalty is an important theme now. Nurture that which you hold dear. This is a good time to strengthen bonds, bonds or friendships and ensure their integrity. If you feel tested right now, know that the true and loyal heart always achieves its aim. Take refuge under an angel's wing. You are not alone and have no need to fear. Embrace your courage. All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed this. I hope it helped, and I love you to infinity and back. Peace.